Yeah, yeah. Behind the gloves.com here with Tom Lawford. Make Tom, sure, make sure you get Abel uh, Sanchez, <laughs> trainer of the year, in the background there. If he wins next Saturday, he will more than likely be that. But let's talk about but tonight's if event. If wins next Saturday, Abel will be trainer of the year and uh, Triple G will be fighter, fighter of the year. year. Let's talk about tonight. Let's talk about the event. You were, you and Peter Nelson basically mastermind this entire shindig, this entire situation, this entire superfly. Yeah. Grade, grade the performance tonight, not just of the fighters, but the event itself. It sold grade out the, one of the, the magical arenas. <laughs> grade the promoter itself. Grade the entire uh, event I itself. I gotta say, the event really uh, lived up to everything that we were telling fans. You know, get your tickets, get them early, because we sold out like right away with the $30 tickets. And we had a lot of $30 tickets. We had like a $1,000, $30 tickets. Not like there was only a few uh, available. And then this floor seat sold out, and uh, the second price category, 150 So. It was uh, it was a great show. Uh, you got to give the fans a lot of credit. You got to give StubHub a lot of credit. HBO for, like you said, uh, helping to put this together. Uh, we pushed hard to get uh, Quad Wrestling Estrada on, and you can see that they had a lot of the fan support. You know, Estrada with his performance over Quadras uh, really uh, put on a, a tremendous show. Uh, this had a little bit of for everything. Brian Valoria had a lot of people come out. Ruslan Madayev, who was uh, trained by uh, by Abel, uh, put on a great show. Uh, in a way, lived up to all the expectations. Everything you hear about him, the monster. He really is the monster. The way he dominated Nieves, he really is a monster in the ring. Those body shots were devastating. The body shots, I mean, I was wincing. I was wincing with the body shots. And um, the way uh, Rungasai he came back and really left no doubt at all who the WBC Super Flyweight Champion is. I mean, he put an exclamation point on his first performance, capping off the main event of the night. It, uh, it was, uh, there was a lot of talent on the show tonight. As the man who was actually held up to, as the man who actually brought Roman Chocolatito to the States and brought him onto HBO and basically showcased him to the world on there. Your thoughts seeing what happened to him today and just seeing him lay there and how how it was, you know, is 115 too much for him? Maybe 112 is where he naturally should remain at. It's hard to say. I mean, that's really a decision that uh, he's got to make with his uh, trainers, with uh, his manager, Carlos Mondon, naturally with his promoter, Mr. Honda. Mr. Honda has been so supportive of uh, Trump and Tito. Uh, you know, I mean, I I, I had the honor of starting to work with Chocotito after he was uh, so established already. And uh, it just because of the platform that we were able to put him on with the HBO support, that's when he started getting all the media recognition. But, you know, after you work with someone for a number of fights, you know, you get very close to the fighter, to their team. And it was, uh, it was challenging to... Uh, it was tough to see him laying on the canvas like that because he has uh, such a tremendous support, such a, such a fan favorite. You know, you saw the majority of people came to see uh, Trumpetito, and he's a national hero in Nicaragua. It just uh, seems that, uh, you know, one looks like just has a bad style. Do you see any parallels between Roman Chocolatito and Ronda Rousey? And what I mean by that is it was her who made women's MMA shine up there and get a light. It was Roman who brought the super flyweight division yeah. up and into light in HBO. And out of nowhere, you get somebody like Holly Holm, Rung Vizai, and this happens to them. Do you think maybe there's just a parallel there that it just happens to the greats? I, I, didn't, I didn't really think about that before, but uh, you, could, you can make some parallels about that because uh, Chocolatito was clearly the most marketable fighter in the lighter weight divisions. He's the one that really broke open the doors, especially on HBO and here in America, to uh, put the spotlight uh, on the lighter divisions. And uh, same thing uh, with what Ronda did uh, in the Octagon, uh, bringing the spotlight to, to female uh, UFC fighting. So there is some uh, parallels there. Uh, you know, Chocolatito was pound for pound for such a long time uh, that uh, you know, he, he really uh, left his mark on the sport of boxing. You know, he did move up three pounds. You, you think that three pounds doesn't make that big of a difference? But, uh, it, at that weight class, it, 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 it's a big thing, especially when you're fighting a big 115 pounder. And finally, final question, let the fans know what they have to do next week to watch Triple G versus Canelo. Next week, HBO pay-per-view or a T-Mobile arena. And, uh, uh, this was the appetizer. For that event, uh, this is exactly the platform that uh, was designed 
for this triple header and next week in Las Vegas it's going to be two of the best fighters, two of the most remarkable fighters giving it all in the ring. Don't, don't miss that fight. That's going to be a tremendous matchup. Thank you for your time, Tom. Hey, fight fans. It's Michelle Joy Phelps. Uh, just before a big fight, I'm often asked, you know, what are the odds? Like, who should I put my money on? Who do you got? It just makes sense for me to tell you guys that you should go visit Bovada. The link is in our description box. Just click it and it'll be directed right over to them. And also, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd appreciate it if you did. Just click right here.